I move for approval of the consent agenda. Second. Oh. Oh. Uh, we'll no. we'll give Dan a minute to get it. I, I did have a question about item C2, please. Okay. All right. Um, Ms. Carmen, if you would uh, address C2, if you'd like to read. Item C2, consideration of ordinance since amending the city code. A, ordinance amending chapter 62 of the city code entitled sanitation, and B, ordinance amending chapter six of the city code entitled animals and fowl. Okay. Purpose of um, the two ordinance amendments that you have before you is to um, address an enforcement gap as relates to dog feces on city property and in particular on the right of way. So in examining the code based upon a uh, concern expressed by a citizen about dog feces being left on the right of way, it appeared there might be an enforcement gap. So this is to address that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, on page 157, um, uh, the amendment to section 62-7 at section two there, the first line, you've inserted the words allow to remain. Mm -hmm. I think I know what you're, I think I know what you're trying to get out there, but isn't that a little broad? Um, how, how does that, how do you interpret that? The, the, the reason I ask is that uh, my assumption is you're talking about a property owner that allows waste from, you know, they say it wasn't their dog to, to keep sitting there. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not defined in, in the term so that someone who walks by and sees it and doesn't do anything like in theory be applicable it's it's the property owner because the ability to assess the cost as a lien against the property it has to be an obligation of the property owner so if in fact it's on their property although somebody else may have placed it there once they're notified that it's there then it's the obligation of the property owner to remove it so for them to allow it to remain and not remove it would constitute the violation would it be reasonable to clarify that um, uh, to, to, to be specific about allow to remain on, on your property. If your property is not the, the, the correct phrasing, but you know, language to that effect. I understand what you're getting at. Sure, I'd be happy to clarify that. Thank you. Um, if there are no other questions, Madam Chair, I, I'd move approval with that clarification. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Carmen. Okay. If uh, may I have approval for the remainder of the consent agenda? Move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. I know Ms. Carmen has a very important date, so <laughs> she's excused. <laughs> so, uh, Okay, uh, we will move to the uh, general agenda. And in fact, there is just the one item on the, the general agenda. We're going to hold G2 until uh, next time around when uh, the Finance Committee will also be taking, uh, taking up that item. So G1, please. Item G1, Polo Cherry Design Study Presentation. And I will start off. Oh, it's my okay. pleasure to introduce uh, Margaret Collins and Jason Epley, along with their team from Center for Creative Economy. And they're going to be making a presentation. You'll recall that several months ago, <coughs> um, Margaret was here to talk to you about a design study plan for the Polo Cherry area. Well, despite all the snow and bad weather during the month of March, we were able to finally get through that process 
over a few days and actually a few weeks because of the snow. But uh, they're here today to report the findings and final recommendations from that um, study. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm Margaret Collins, and I'm the director of the Center for Creative Economy. It is a nonprofit based here in Winston-Salem, and what we do is work to build a culture of innovation, connecting creatives with business. And one of our projects is DesignLink. And the Design Link team has actually worked with the neighbors and community stakeholders in the Polo Road and North Cherry area, uh, March 4 through 6. We held a series of workshops. And our goal for these workshops was to listen to the community needs, to gather input from a broad cross-section of the stakeholders, to generate options for development, <clears throat> and then to produce design and development concepts, complete with visuals. So today we're here to share with you the concepts that came out, actually the concepts that were developed by our team, but in conjunction with the, the neighborhood and stakeholders there. I'd like to just briefly introduce our Design Link team colleagues that are here. We have Jason Epley and Vaughn Hansen from Benchmark Planning. They are urban planning and development and an integral part of our Design Link team. Scott Miller from MLA Design, who's based here in Winston-Salem, a landscape architect. Frank Amenya from Davenport uh, Transportation just walked in, so Frank is here. And also, we are grateful to um, the Piedmont Together and Park staff that has helped fund these projects. And Kyle is here from um, Kyle Laird is here from Piedmont Together and Park. So I'm going to turn it over to Vaughn Hanson, and he's going to walk you through the presentation, which is up on the screen. Welcome to all of you. I'll get to do this. Thank you again for having us here today to present the results of the, the design study that we uh, assisted the community with. Um, as Margaret mentioned, we had a great team of people. Um, she mentioned some of them are here today. We also had, uh, in addition, Greenfield Associates, Robin Spinks from Wilmington was here, along with uh, Moser, uh, Bill Moser from Moser, Moser Mayor Phoenix over in Greensboro. And we had great participation, of course, from the community in this. And without them coming and uh, <coughs> helping to generate the base of knowledge for the plan, we wouldn't have been um, as successful as I think we were. So here is the site, um, kind of generally outlined in blue and shaded blue. And the focus of that really was at the center of that area. And this is the existing conditions of the intersection today, the Polo Road, North Cherry Street intersection. You can see all four corners there as it currently exists. Um, the process began on the first day with a general discussion with members of the community. On day two, we began working with the community to develop alternatives for the future of the neighborhood. Uh, day three, the team went back and internally uh, further developed those recommendations. Um, on the Friday of that week, we were supposed to have a pre final presentation to the community, but of course it snowed and so that was pushed back a week. Um, but we still had great turnout for that presentation. So on day one in the group discussions, uh, we heard a lot of positive things about the neighborhood, a very convenient location in the city, uh, being next door to Wake Forest University of the diversity of the population in the neighborhood, and really the affordability of the housing that's there. People can live in this great location for not a high price. Also, people feel that it's a really untapped and overlooked market. Um, there are a lot of people that have some disposable income there, as we're going we're gonna to see, and the market demand is not really being met. Uh, and there's a general desire among all the members of the community for some positive change and bringing back the vibrancy in the area that used to exist, um, especially when RJR was operating. So what did the, the community tell us they wanted for the future? Well, something that's walkable, well-connected, well-connected, safe, and active lifestyles, um, a number of businesses to serve the needs of the community, as well as the university, uh, green space, recreational opportunities for people that live in the neighborhood, uh, economic development opportunities for both the residents and bringing new businesses in, and improving the appearance of the area which goes to some of the challenges that we had. Uh, and so the, the vision was really the, the opposite of what we learned from some of the challenges. And so uh, currently we, we, we heard from people in the neighborhood that they don't feel safe uh, walking the streets and riding bikes because of the lack of, bicy of bicycle lanes or sidewalks in most of the neighborhood. Um, poor curb appeal when you drive through there. Uh, if you're on your way somewhere, you might not think it's the most appealing place to stop. Um, some rental properties in bad condition. So those are the, that's, that's what the community told us. Um, we also presented some information back to the community about what the existing conditions were, starting with the market summary of the area. 
this was Robin's part of uh, contribution to the, to the project. <laughs> and so the, the demographics within about a mile of that intersection had about 8,000 residents and 2,500 households. Uh, and between 2000 and 2010, there was a decline in population that the census saw. But that number has begun to rebound since 2010. I've actually seen a growth rate that exceeds the city's growth rate uh, for that uh, 2010 to 2013 period. So more people are moving back into the neighborhood. It's a youthful and diverse neighborhood. Um, and it's not just because of Wake Forest University students. A number of young families are moving <coughs> in the neighborhood as well. And it's, really, it's much younger than Winston-Salem as a whole. So the average age, 22.9 years, where the city's uh, uh, about 34 and a half years in age, uh, in terms of the average or median age. Um, there's no single ethnic group that is a majority of the population in the neighborhood. And, and over 20% of the population is Hispanic. So it really, it's young, it's diverse. It has the opportunity to become vibrant with these young people living in the neighborhood. Um, the average household income is about half of what you see in the city as a whole. It's even less than the, the larger general area, about three miles out. So less than half of what you see in the city as a whole. But Robin did a retail analysis of the area, and it's a lot of little text and a lot of red bars. Basically, everything you see going to the right on that screen is money that's flowing out of the community today. So there are opportunities that exist. Only a few of those retail sectors is being, are being overrepresented or fulfilled within that small area. So there's a lot of money going out of the community that business people, if they want to look at this area, have the opportunity to come in and capture. So that presents some great opportunities for future development. Uh, and of course, just being next door to Wake Forest uh, University presents a lot of opportunities with the 9,000 plus students, faculty, and staff, uh, as well as visitors that come to the area for athletic events and other events on campus. And then with uh, the potential for the redevelopment of Whitaker Park into a, a new economic development engine for the area, that really presents some great opportunities going forward for that area. And if that happens, you'll see change occurring um, probably immediately. Uh, looking at the physical characteristics of the neighborhood, um, so what's going on there today, again, in the center of this ring is the uh, intersection of Polar Road and North Cherry Street. And we look at the major roadways traversing the area, of course, uh, Parkway on the, on the west side, and Indiana Avenue on the east side, and uh, Polo and Cherry bisect the neighborhood. Uh, Single-family residences kind of sprung up in the area. Uh, that was followed by some multifamily development in Brown, shown on the screen, with the railroad running along Indiana Avenue. That fostered, of course, the industrial development that we see in the neighborhood. And then within that ring, the areas that have not been developed or might be underdeveloped now, we identified some of those during our uh, analysis of the area as well. And those are represented in green on that map. So some of the recommendations, uh, going back to addressing some of the future vision for the neighborhood that the community desired. Uh, first, to address the tra traffic issues with people speeding uh, through the neighborhood wide roads in certain instances, lack of pedestrian facilities. Um, we wanted to introduce a concept into this neighborhood that's called Complete Streets. The DOT has a Complete Streets design manual. And so we wanted to apply some of these principles to the neighborhood uh, just to envision how it could be in the future for the, for the street network. And mainly focusing on North Cherry Street and Polo Road. So North Cherry Street, as you can see, the existing conditions, uh, generally a four lane facility, uh, no turn lanes. Uh, no sidewalks in certain locations, uh, sidewalk on one side in certain locations. Uh, and so the proposal would be to uh, take that existing right-of-way and turn it into a two-lane facility with a center turn lane, as well as bike lanes on the existing right-of-way, as well as sidewalks on both sides of the street. And here again you see a rendering of what that potential cross-section would be, as well as a photo illustration to help you visualize better. And we did the same thing for each of the other segments of the road. So Polar Road, the east side, east of uh, North Cherry Street, same type of treatment for that area. As you know now, it's a, a fairly well-used uh, cut-through street from Indiana over towards the university area. A lot of traffic going pretty fast uh, through that area. By narrowing the lanes, um, by adding the, the bikes, by, bike lanes, by adding the landscaping and the sidewalks, you tend to narrow uh, the field of vision and help to slow down traffic. So traffic calming, of course, was a, a secondary response to this, not just providing additional bike and pedestrian facilities. And again, you see the areas that exist today and what it could look like if, it, if that type of treatment were applied to it. The good thing about road diet, what we also call these road diets, when you take existing right-of-way instead of expanding the road, we're dieting the road. 
Um, a lot of these expansions of bike facilities, pedestrian facilities, and changing of the lanes can be done within the existing right-of-way, sometimes just as simple as repainting it in a different manner uh, when the next paving job is done on the street. So it's potentially a more cost-effective uh, road improvement project than some others you might see. Uh, Polo Road West, going back towards the university, it's a pretty narrow road today. Um, there's a, a good amount of right-of-way there, so there are some opportunities to use um, some right-of-way that exists today to add some facilities. And in this case, we're proposing that a, a dedicated bicycle path be located on the south side of the road and a new sidewalk be added on the north side of the road in that configuration. And here you see today and what it could be like in the future with those additional facilities. And one of the questions, of course, came up, there's a barrier that exists at the University Parkway with a bridge going over the road there. And so how do you get pedestrians and bicyclists safely across there? Um, we looked at that facility, and this may or may not be something that might be workable. Um, but the idea that we had was there is a concrete divided um, section of lanes on the south side of the road where the bicycle lanes or the bicycle facility would be. And there is potential to potentially uh, modify that side of the road to bring the bikes and pedestrians onto that section, have it divided and separated from the through lanes, which would be on the other side of the median, uh, with that concrete barrier there, mm -hmm. providing a safe opportunity for people to cross between Wake Forest and the neighborhood. So the, the physical development of the area, besides the, the roadway network, um, looking at these sites in particular, uh, one an un undeveloped property in the southwestern uh, corner of that circle, the road frontage along the Gwent, where the Gwynn Motors building is and some other undeveloped property along uh, East Polo Road and the corner property that NCDOT owns. Uh, but looking more generally at the area, talking about the design character, um, putting forth the community's vision if, if growth does occur, if redevelopment does occur, what they're looking for. And what we heard was something that was somewhat reflective of what exists there today and what existed there in the past. And this kind of urban industrial design character for the area that takes those elements of the more urban and industrial uh, past of the area and either adapts existing buildings into uh, new uses or builds new buildings where they are reflective of that, uh, that character. Also, uh, bringing an active street life, having community-oriented businesses that facilitate that, um, uses that people tend to gather at, such as coffee shops, other types of neighborhoods, small-scale retail businesses, restaurants, et cetera. Making sure that the design of, of the buildings is oriented toward the pedestrian and not towards the automobile. So buildings front the streets, they have wide sidewalks in front of them, places for people to gather. Of course, safe facilities for people to walk uh, to the neighborhood retail. And going into the first of those areas is, the, you know, the, the intersection of Polo Road and North Cherry. Um, really, this is the, the, the centerpiece of the neighborhood. Everybody's going to see it no matter which way you go through. And so really a lot of recommendations in the plan about improving the appearance of it through adding landscaping, uh, putting maybe mast arm poles up, new signals, uh, decorative street lights to the area. So this is the way that the intersection looks today. This is looking northeast towards the NCDOT property, and that's an, uh, really an underutilized property now. They just park uh, equipment on there, put material on there, uh, et cetera. They have done some things in the recent past to try and improve it, but it might not look like the city or the neighborhood might want it to look like in the future. So that's today. Here's just, just adding some of these improvements that we talked about with the mast arm signals and the new crosswalks, uh, some additional landscaping. But what we could do to, to activate the corner even more would be to put some sort of community-oriented facility on that property. Um, we had some talks with folks from DOT as we were there. They weren't the people who make the final decisions, but um, from their perspective, uh, if another piece of land adjoining them were to be available, uh, there might be an opportunity to swap. And so if that were to occur, what would that site potentially look like? And this is an overhead view that uh, Scott's group did of that area with uh, showing a a new community facility, maybe like a farmer's market or some other type of community-oriented retail building on the corner with maybe a plaza out front. And the back of the property, as you know now, it's kind of, uh, there's a lot of grade change in elevation back there. And they're using some of the stormwater detention in the back. And so potentially that area could be turned into some sort of public or open space or green space back there, maybe a small pocket park. 
Uh, going back across the street, the Gwen Motors building, uh, Bill Moser got an opportunity to go over there with the property owner, or maybe the real estate agent representing them, and kind of take a few pictures inside, look around, and his assessment of the building was that, you know, it's at the stage in its life where it either gets saved now or it's not going to be able to, to be saved. And so there might be some opportunities if somebody comes along really right now to, to do something to it, to rehab it. But based on the conditions that he saw with the, with the structure, he wasn't really sure how cost effective that was going to be. And so envisioning what if that building were to go away, it's on a, a pretty significant piece of land uh, at a pretty significant intersection in the neighborhood. And so this is just a conceptual design of how that area could be developed, redeveloped with some mixed use buildings with parking in the rear uh, to help contribute to the character of the neighborhood, adding retail, adding living opportunities. We looked at existing, other existing buildings as well. Uh, this is where the barber shop is. Uh, the gentleman that owns that came by and uh, was happy to talk to us about it and wanted to look at some ideas about how he could improve the appearance of his building further. And so we worked with him just to conceptualize what improvements could look like uh, if we wanted to maybe attract some different uh, retail tenants to the building. Uh, got the Wake Mart on the northwest corner of the intersection. And it's a gas station now. It's probably going to be a gas station for a, a good long time. Uh, but what, what would happen if that gas station were to go out of business? Uh, the chains aren't going to come back in. Independent owners don't usually buy up uh, gas stations and reopen them if they haven't. Uh, been able to stay in business. And so a lot, of, a lot of cities are seeing old gas stations turned adaptively reused into new structures. The, the canopies out front give opportunities for that indoor-outdoor interaction, provide some active street life. Uh, in Charlotte, where I live, we have a number of these uh, bagel places, pizza places, bars, et cetera, where they're utilizing the roll-up doors, uh, maybe in some of these old gas stations, utilizing the canopies for great space. So uh, we hope they, you know, have good business there, but you know, what if you don't want a derelict gas station sitting around? And so we wanted to provide an idea of what might be able to be done to an interested, pro interested property owner in the future. Uh, this property is in the southwestern uh, quadrant of the intersection. Uh, you see the vacant piece of land in the middle there, trees uh, surrounded by houses on the uh, west, north, and east, and by some multifamily on the south side. And one of our team members took a special interest in this in this piece of land. Uh, and wanted to scope out, see what could be done in terms of an infill residential development in this area to add some value and add some new residents to the neighborhood. Uh, of course, connecting through there to the existing neighborhoods would be great, um, providing uh, both street outlets for the new development as well as pedestrian uh, connectivity as well. So this was his first uh, conceptual design of it, showing how uh, new lots fitting with the existing zoning there could look. Um, we also took an interest, if you see, the, there's very large backyards in those houses fronting North, North Cherry Street. And so the property owners aren't getting a lot of value out of those right now. Well, how could they receive potentially more value through uh, development on this property? Well, it could be reconfigured like that. If they wanted to sell the, the rear portion of their lots, you could have a small park even in the middle of this neighborhood, get the same kind of density of units, and as well as lots of good connectivity still. So those are some of the main ideas, some of the more graphically oriented ideas that are good to present in uh, situations like these that we wanted to share with you today. And we also developed, there's a, a, a recommendations about next steps uh, section in the, in the back of the, of the document. And so our, of course, recommendations are about implementing the Complete Streets program. We have some ideas about how that potentially might be funded. Um, of course, uh, seeking the redevelopment of the NCDOT corner property, pursuing perhaps a development agreement, um, something to facilitate a land exchange with an, a nearby neighbor, um, to come up with something like that. We didn't talk about this previously, but um, some of you are probably aware of a, a manufactured home park, mobile home park on uh, Polo Road East of Cherry, uh, which was really identified by a lot of the neighbors that came to the meetings as being something that was detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, it, either in reality or a perception of what might be going on there. And it's a really great piece of property. So it, join, it, it joins NCDOT. Um, and there's some opportunities for even redeveloping as it is. So it could be something that was a part of a land swap to get, get a hold of that corner uh, where that property owner might want to develop on the corner. Uh, and so we're also uh, promoting in the plan that that might be uh, proactively rezoned by the city. It's currently it's zoned for mo mobile home park right now, 
which isn't something you typically see in the middle mm-hmm. of a city. Um, so there's some opportunities there. Uh, Bill's group just did this conceptual drawing just to show how perhaps some senior housing, something along those lines, might be able to fit there. It's about four acres of land. Um, you could get about 36 townhomes there with uh, the city's MF12 zoning district, something that would be more compatible with the surrounding neighborhood and bring, bring residents and provide a, a good service to the, to the area. Now, of course, uh, develop, you know, business development and marketing the, the neighborhood through this plan, through other efforts. Um, so just encouraging the city to further develop retail analysis to see what can go there and proactively recruiting business to the area, working with groups that are in that, uh, in that field, nonprofits maybe that are in the community already. Um, making sure that the properties that are available there, there are a number of properties for sale or lease, uh, making sure those are marketed properly and potentially doing a community branding initiative as well. There's a, a range of uh, ideas presented in the plan. And so that is it. Thank you. Would Are there any questions, any questions anyone would like to ask? No? Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any questions. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, on behalf of the North Ward and the City of Winston-Salem, we'd like to thank you all for all of the work that you put into this project for us. Um, the comments have been made earlier that we have a lot of plans and that we always hope that they will be, become implemented. Well, I would love to see this implemented and I'd like to see something start as soon as possible. Uh, as you know, there is something on the bonds, hopefully for November, to try to make this happen in that neighborhood. Uh, as I tell people, that neighborhood is a gateway to not just one of our universities, but to the northern side of town that used to be a very vibrant community with R.J. Reynolds. Uh, as you stated in your presentation, it has an urban manufacturing feel to it, much like what you see uh, in cities like Savannah or Baltimore or Charleston as you get closer to the dock or where a lot of the, the commercial uh, manufacturing was taking place. Uh, I was very glad I see uh, some of the neighbors, uh, people from the neighborhood, uh, and if you, I don't know whether the chair is going to entertain letting you have some comments, but they were a part of the process. Uh, Council Member McIntosh even came and uh, the city manager, assistant city manager, and others were there. But uh, this, this area of the North Ward is important. It's just like the Cleveland Area Master Plan or the plans going over at the Salem Creek Connector, uh, no different than Peters Creek, no different than Ardmore, no different than any of that. This area needs to be revitalized. And again, we got the plan, and uh, I'll be getting with the city manager and his staff and talking to my council members as to how we can start to implement or help to initiate some of the uh, results that you have given us. Again, I'd like to thank you so much for what you did for us. I enjoyed it tremendously. Uh, you are great subject matter experts in, in developing and putting plans like this together. Uh, the visuals. They're amazing. I'm about ready to put them up on my wall at home, but uh, I think this is great. This is great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do do uh, any of the residents of the area want three minutes to speak? Or uh, come, come up to the podium, please, <laughs> and give your name and address. Yeah. Uh, my name is Andrea Belanger. I live at 3914 North Cherry Street, so I'm right off, like three houses down from that intersection that they're all talking about. Um, and like they said, I bought the house. I'm, in, I'm a graduate student at Wake Forest um, in the PhD program, so I knew I was going to be there a while. So I bought a house when I was 23 because it's cheap <laughs> there, and I was really close to campus. And there's no doubt in my mind that if, if um, shops and restaurants opened up, that Wake Forest would be so excited to have something there because right now there's nothing for students and faculty to do and I know Wake is trying to make it a uh, they don't want people to have cars on campus so they keep jacking up the price of parking spaces for students and so I mean I just picture like the Wake shuttle stopping at that corner to like let students off and you know they could 
go grab a bite to eat, like a bagel shop, coffee shop, or, you know, there's no, like, hair salon, there's no, there's nothing there. Everyone always has to go to Haynes Mall Boulevard and sit in traffic for ever. <laughs> so, I don't know, I just, I'm really excited. The pictures look great. I'm, I'm really happy. I hope it happens before I leave. But yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Councilmember McIntosh, did you have a question for her? No, just a comment. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. A, a, a comment for her is we want to see it happen before you leave too. So yeah. we're with you on that. Please stay. <laughs> <clears throat> but I, I do appreciate the effort in this, and I think the consultants did a great job. I, I really like the fact that we're concentrating on re doing our existing infrastructure, reusing our existing infrastructure versus continuing to push out, um, especially during bond time and budget time when you look at the cost of repaving roads and widening roads. I think it just makes a whole lot more sense to, uh, to spend the money in closer in, in areas that are already um, habited. So uh, my, my, my hat's off to this. I think we need to do some fairly serious market studies just to make sure that we know uh, what can survive in the area before we start throwing money at it. But um, it's, it, it, it butts up to my ward, so I mean, it, to me, it's a it's a great place to uh, to spend the effort and and make it a success. I was wondering, can you refresh my recollection? Where is this in the bond package? I, I was trying to remember and couldn't. <laughs> there's, uh, Councilor Bessie, there's two million dollars in the transportation section of the bond package for Polo Cherry corridor improvements. So, it would, that would be primarily targeted towards the complete streets recommendations. I was adding up the, um, uh, the totals for that, and in the, the report here, it seems like a, roughly a million dollars worth of uh, bike bed, you know, pedestrian safety uh, improvements uh, specifically identified there. So, uh, that would leave some additional funding for some of the other work. Um, is there a timetable for the uh, for the council to review and approve um, an implementation plan. I was reading through the next steps, and there are some specifics that are identified as recommended there. We haven't developed that yet, but we can bring that forward. I mean, there are obviously different pieces that can move quicker than others. Um, as Councilor McIntosh in, in indicated, some of it's going to take some market analysis, and some of it's going to take quite a bit of financial resources to do. Um, is there any um, is there any debate really on the street recommendations, the bike bed? No. Um, would it be appropriate to ask for a a report back on on steps that could be taken to get that underway, assuming approval of the bond uh -huh. item? I, I believe we're working. We could have that this summer prior to the bond approval. The the details of of that part of it. I have one more comment. Uh, yeah. May I ask a question, and this may be uh, to you, Dee Dee. Um, the, the pink area of the map, the industrial area, is that, I mean, is that well used, or is it also, uh, you know, with empty, empty uh, spaces and whatever? Mm -hmm. Chairman Light, there are plans for future development for some of that industrial area as Whitaker Park expansion occurs and uh -huh. reuse occurs. Um, still working on what that final design will look like, but there is a long-range plan for the revitalization of that park. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you have, yes. Yes. Uh, might want to say, Mr. Page, uh, a lot of people think that the area is vacant, empty, and that's not true. And it's like it's quiet, but if you could kind of, you don't have to disclose who's there, but then again, if a person drove through there and probably went into the building, they would know. Uh, at least some of the, the manufacturing or businesses that are in that area, in that campus area up there, and possibly some of the other uh, I guess initiatives, investigative ask uh, for uses of the property, the Whitaker Park area. Currently it's being studied by an authority or a group that is forming an authority to manage the overall use of that property and the redevelopment of that property, looking at a combination of innovation 
as they used in manufacturing, as they used almost um, some thought to spin off some of the research part type uses to provide the actual manufacturing space that's not available in the current research park. So you'd have possibly research here, the manufacturing component over there is one concept that's being discussed, but they continue to explore those options. Um, Council Member Adams is correct. There are already several users in the park right now, and several other people are looking at space in the park. Um, probably several hundred employees are already there with some of the users and uses uh, have some manufacturing there, have some research there, and have some um, actual manu uh, some office use mm -hmm. that's going on right there now. Matter of fact, we all did a economic development deal a few years ago for Pepsi, which is located yeah. on the southern edge of the park for a call center that they have up there, and there's several other uses in the old World Trade Center. Yeah. And that's the name of that building. On, um, World, World Headquarters. World Headquarters. And, and one more comment, uh, Council Members. Uh, being that I live right near Polo and I travel Polo all the time, I've seen an increase this year in bicycle riding of Wake students, and Councilman McIntosh, you probably have too. And they're coming from Polo on the back side where all the new housing and uh, the other streets that are back there, they come out on the Polo Road without a thought. And I, I'm like, you, you got to be lucky or somebody's praying for you <laughs> because they ride the bikes now to the campus. As she was saying, they're the price of, yeah, the parking is to the point now there are more people riding bikes and we don't have any bike lanes on Polo at all. So just a thought. Good. Thank you. Very exciting. Another thing that's good news, uh, we just closed on the transaction. Wake Forest University gave us the old sort building, which is just east of this site of this intersection on Polo Road. And we are in the process of moving all of our police special operations into that facility and they're very excited, the police department is, and it, it'll be a good stabilizer also for the neighborhood. Yeah. Right next yeah. to the rec center? It's, no, it's, where is it? It's near the corner of Indiana. And Marita Old Bakery right. is here, oh, okay. and then across yeah, the railroad, railroad track right. on your right. Okay. okay. Oh, very good. If there are no other questions and no other items of business that anybody needs to bring up, this was short and sweet. Thank you all again. Thank you. This is a we need. Thank you.